I'm honestly kind of curious about Ultimate Firestar. I realize it's another North Chilean G match. So... Yeah, I think I will go with... Ultimate Firestar. Even though another North Chilean G... I just want to see these newer players, because, I mean, they tried so hard to get in, and they got in. Like, they did manage to get in, ultimately. I'm just curious... Like, it's really... It's really piquing my curiosity, because I'm thinking, okay, cool, so they're... They really wanted to play this game, they really wanted to get in, I just realized, I'm sorry, that last match was not properly labeled. But... Yeah, I, they really wanted to get in. They really wanted to get into this tournament. They were practicing. They had a high hopes of this tournament. I just want to see them play. I want to see how they both play. We saw Space Tuna before. Clearly ambitious, but lacking a lot of experience. Like, they've they practiced. I can tell they practiced. But they're also missing a lot of experience about what happens in a lot of different situations. Like, how these things just go. But... I don't know. I mean, Space Tuna... I'm glad they are participating. I'm really glad Ultimate Firestar and Space Tuna managed to get in. I mean, I was a little annoyed that the, the game was... Or the whole the stuff was delayed. But honestly, at this point, it's all set up. So it's all good. But yeah, I'm glad they were able to play. I don't know if they're going to be able to do any... Get any wins. But I know that feeling. Like, it's not an easy feeling to get used to. Trust me. But I mean, I'm glad they came out. I'm glad they participated. I'm... Really sad that it required so much effort for them to get in. Like, it wasn't... The post wasn't properly there. But, thankfully, everything's been sorted out. I'm not sure where they are, though, because they should be in my room so I can actually cast them. Oh, wait, I'm not in my room. That's why. They should be in my room. So should I. Let's join my own room. And that is... All right, we were good. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. North Chilean G and Ultimate Firestar. I have no idea how Ultimate Firestar plays. North Chilean G is going to go for cheese. I'm betting on it. I am seriously sure that North Chilean G is going for cheese. Because, first off, unfamiliar player. Second, best of one matches. And third, we saw in the last game North Chilean G went for cheese. And iced coffee is another good map for cheese. Gunship cheese in particular. So we're probably going to see Gunship Factory. Probably going to see the new constructor, the Wasp. It's not called the Bumblebee. It was originally. It's I kind of like that name, but oh well. That's not what it's called. It's currently called the Wasp. And yeah, that is going to be... That's going to be the match. So once the game gets going... Not sure. Okay, so Jump Bot for Ultimate Firestar. And North Lane G... Have they chosen their map setup yet? Oh, I just realized. Sprung actually set up the start box here, the start polygon. Thank you, Sprung. I kind of meant to do that for the map itself, but I guess if it's been done, that's that's great. Cool. I mentioned before, I really like the start polygon thing. I think it should be used in every map. I think every map going forward should have this, and this map was made before it, but thankfully Sprung threw it in, or presumably Sprung threw it in. Someone threw it in, retrofitted it. Really glad about that. Because I just like the system. I like the whole polygon system. It's a lot cleaner. A lot cleaner than the box system, which doesn't quite respect everything. Anyway, North Chilean G not pre-gaming a factory. Oh, they're going for Amphib. So they're not going for a gunship cheese. That is a little surprising. And apparently Ultimate Firestar are very glad that they are on stream. Well, you're welcome. I'm assuming that's what they're thanking me for. I don't expect they're thanking me for saying that I'm glad that they and Space Tuna managed to play, because that would mean they're probably watching the stream. There is a delay on the stream, but please don't watch the stream if you're playing. Just play your game. Anyhow, North Chilean G going for the standard, opening with Conch to Duck, and a lot of wind generators, because this map is very powerful for wind generators. It is, it's 0.3 to 2.5. But that's powerful enough. And for Ultimate Firestar, though, either not thinking about wind gens or doing the math and figuring 0.3 is too low, which on average it isn't, but in the worst case it is. 
So that's a fair fair concern, especially when you consider that that does mean this is a bit closed. And Ultimate Firestar going for Pyros. Now, I'm not sure. I think if... Okay, I can't really test. I'm trying to remember how far this goes. So this goes this... Oh, you know what? Yeah, I think Pyro could go here and then jump up and then walk up. But unfortunately, the Pyro being caught out by Ducks, not quite able to rush in. What it really wants to do is rush in, get rid of the wind generators. That would help Ultimate Firestar so much. But unfortunately, Ultimate Firestar, I'm not sure if they realize the backside of this is bot pathable. And trying to micro with the jump rather than using the jump as an invasion tool. A little surprising there. I don't know why they're using jump as a standard movement tool. It's kind of quick, but the jump refresh time is not... Like, the cooldown can get in the way. But yeah, Ultimate Firestar are not aware that North Chilean G is going for all these wind generators. A lot of puppies... Okay, getting the puppies, I was about to say, Ultimate Firestar needs to do some proper scouting. And puppies are the tool with which to do so. And... Oh, that Pyro needs to go up the... I don't know if Ultimate Firestar realizes there is a path up this cliff. This is not a sheer cliff. This actually is bot-pathable. Oh, they'll find out soon enough. I mean, they're going to walk onto it and realize, oh, I could have just walked. But the point is, they're up here, and now they're down. And dead. I guess they won't find out. But yeah, this is bot-pathable. This is totally bot-pathable. If you look, it's all red. There's one slight slice of purple. A bit clearer in the bottom unless I tilt the camera. But yeah, it's all red. Which means... It's pathable. Slower, but pathable. But as far as Ultimate Firestar went, that was not the most successful raid. Unfortunately for them, the Archer was built. Because if it weren't for the Archer, that Pyro would have dealt huge amounts of damage. Like, it would have been able to get rid of probably all of the Wind Generators, no problem. That was actually... That was pretty effective. It's just that now Ultimate Firestar has to deal with the defenses that have been built up and the Archer that's been built up. And granted, if they were to take the same path they did last time, they'd actually get in without issue once again. It's just they're not going to. They're going to be taking more of a frontal path. And they're also setting up, whereas North Chilean G sees all these setups. I mean, they have radar. They can see what's going on. So North Chilean G sees all this stuff, knows, oh, hey, Ultimate Firestar is setting up to attack and is just going out to counter. And Ultimate Firestar once again losing another Pyro. Able to get rid of a duck in the process. Possibly two? Is this duck going to burn? It is going to burn to death. So that's two ducks for the price of a Pyro, which is actually not as expensive. The price of a Pyro is about two and three quarters ducks. So I'm afraid one more duck needed to die for that Pyro to really pay for itself. And at this point, Ultimate Firestar, with a slight economic disadvantage, is not really being well served by the fact that the Pyros are not trading well. On top of that, Air Factory coming in, and a Scallop going to be stopping the Pyro from scouting that out, which is really unfortunate because Ultimate Firestar, if they had managed to scout this out, this game is probably going to go very south for them very fast. There's no Razors, there's a few Defenders, there's nothing to really defend against Air. And there's no way to know, because nothing is scouting this out. Nothing has come in. Ultimate Firestar has no idea. The Pyros are continuing to basically rush into their death. Not really doing a whole lot of good, unfortunately. Dealing some damage, but not dealing anything significant, and definitely not scouting out the airplane factory. So Ultimate Firestar right now, just trying desperately to push forward while North Chilean G building up, getting their defenses... Not getting as much economy as is probably ideal, but still getting their defenses up, getting what they need. They're getting economy, more or less. Actually, Ultimate Firestar is slightly ahead economically at this point, so North Chilean G will want to catch up. But once the airplane factory is done, we'll probably see... I almost want to say Ravens, but I'm guessing we'll probably see a bunch of Phoenixes that will attack the main base. Because North Chilean G has not scouted Ultimate Firestar, so North Chilean G is probably expecting that Ultimate Firestar went all wins just like they did. And no, in fact, we are seeing a Raven. We are not seeing any Phoenixes. None are in the queue. Pure Raven. All right. So this is going to be probably an anti-metal extractor setup, not an anti-wind generator setup. Possibly an anti-commander setup, though that's really fallen out of favor, so I doubt it. But yeah, metal extractors are likely the targets. That or Lotuses. Both of them are good targets for Ravens. I... I would expect Metal Extractors at this point. Ultimate Firestar, they don't have a whole lot of defenses set up. They have these two Lotuses, they have some Defenders. 
that's about it. Like, there's really not much. Nothing that North Chalangi's ground force can't deal with. And a lot of Pyros is being torn to shreds. And Ultimate Firestar did not have them set up in the best of positions, so at this point, it's not working out too well. And the one Raven's done, another Raven being built up. North Chilean G, really low on metal for actually doing all this. That's the one downside here. But the Raven is going up, and it's actually anti-Pyro, which is interesting, very unexpected. Because Pyros can jump away from the Ravens, and if you attack Ravens with Pyros, granted they don't dive as much as they used to, so puppy support won't be as damaging, won't be quite as devastating. But still. Oh, that moderator's way too close. I'm not sure if Ultimate Firestar is familiar with the reload times, like if they're intuitively familiar with the reload times of the Jump Bot factory and its units. I feel like they're not. Like, moderators really have to be at a distance because they take, I think, 10 seconds? Yeah, 10 seconds to reload. That is way too long for anything effective to happen. That's... That's just ridiculously long. If you're at close range. If you're far enough away, it's fine. But if you're at close range, it's suicide. That's the big problem. And these scallops are really not... They're not being responded to. Ultimate Firestar does have a couple moderators and is going for the jacks, which is not terrible. That's actually a good idea. Will rush in, hit the scallop, hit the scallops. But the moderators really are the way to go. Moderator placeholder would be okay here. Though the air, I almost would expect Archangels or Razors or something anti-air. I don't see any anti-air. Defenders don't count against Ravens. Even Razors don't really count. Hacksaws are okay. Even hacksaws I'm not totally sure about. Chainsaws are good. Chainsaws are really expensive. But yeah, see? Defenders go down. No problems. Oh, okay, never mind. The Raven was almost killed. Another defender probably would have done the trick. But Ultimate Firestar's commander, under a huge amount of threat, at this point with the Reclaim, is actually at an economic advantage, though. But not making use of that. They're soon about to... They're about to... Re Completely excess. They need to get something going. Another caretaker, another factory, something. Like, that 3.5 metal is just wasted right now. And yeah, they are accessing now. This is one of the biggest challenges in this game, is making sure that you don't excess. Wow, mid-air bombing. Impressive. Did manage to... Uh, that spike... That jack managed to spike a mid-air raven. That just happened. While getting bombed in mid-air. I'm actually kind of impressed. But yes, okay, Ultimate Firestar with a bit more production does need another Caretaker, though. Another Caretaker, another Builder, something, anything. It doesn't really matter, just something. They, they need things. They need to have something beyond what they currently have, because right now, it's really not enough. So I don't really know what exactly is going to be going on here. It's basically just North Chilean G bombing out Ultimate Firestar. And Ultimate Firestar doing their best to deal with this, but unfortunately not really setting up the units that they need where they need them. I mean, I can kind of see why Jacks are being used. They're not a bad assault force. They're not terrible at getting rid of all these light units. But they, they're they kind of tanks. You do want to have some support on top of that, or something more offensive. And that's not what we see. We just see a bunch of jacks. And Ultimate Firestar not producing constantly. Why are they not on RePQ? The, the RePQ is a thing. You can do RePQ on factories. That's what it's for. I don't know why Ultimate Firestar is not going on RePQ. I do know why they're going for Firewalker. And I agree with that. Because that will get rid of a lot of this crap. In fact, if they hit the main base, that's going to be super effective. Since North Chilean G's power is mostly here. Half of it's over here. The other half of it is down over the northwest. And a little bit over to... That's it. Yep, actually. That's entirely it. So, if the Firewalker gets close enough, I will very much agree with that choice. If not, there's still the ducks. There are still targets. I mean, there's still the there's still a lot of defenses. Artillery is still a good idea here. I should note, North Chilean G did not go for cheese. They actually went for the opposite. They went rather defensive. And those jacks, I mean, they are tanking very well. Those ravens are wasting a lot of shots that could be attacking metal extractors. That could be attacking the commander, that could be attacking wind generators. There's enough that they could 
all together kill all the wind generators. And the jacks are tanking it out. I mean, it's not the most effective, cost-wise. But it is also less damage being dealt to the infrastructure that Ultimate Firestar is relying on in order to not totally die. Unfortunately, Ultimate Firestar is also not totally able to maintain this because they are out of jacks. They have none left. They've all died. And now the infrastructure is being directly attacked, and the Firewalker is unfortunately not enough. Why, Ultimate Firestar, are you not constructing things constantly? Repeat queue is a thing. Pro tip for all new players, repeat queue is a thing. It is not necessarily the most effective at high level, although admittedly there was the factory. Not admittedly the most effective at high levels, because you may want to save money for something, or want to specifically build something right now, but that's what holding alt is for, and getting the emergency build. But as a rule, repeat queue is your friend. That is what you have to do. Because if you don't do that, then you excess resources, and if you excess resources, then you don't really get the advantage of having whatever economy you have, especially the reclaim right now. This all this is doing is denying North Chilean G to reclaim it. And honestly, if North Chilean G had this reclaim, Ultimate Firestar would be in even more trouble. Like, they would be probably already surrendering by that point, if not now, because they are. But yeah, that's... That's really been the thing. I feel like both games, Space Tuna had this problem too. This is a common newbie mistake. Repeat Q is your friend. I don't know if they're StarCraft players. If they are, that would make a lot of sense, because in StarCraft, there's no repeat Q, and queuing is a bad idea, because queuing ends up using resources that could go to other production facilities, which then could produce however many units you're producing right now in series in parallel instead. But in 0K, you generally don't build more than one factory because units, like, parallel or series makes little difference. And actually doing it in parallel means that you don't have units in the interim. Like, if you're building five units in parallel, once they're all out, you have five units, but before then, you have zero. If you're building them all in series, you get them at the same time. It takes just as long, but if someone attacks you halfway through, you have two or three units available to defend. So there's really not much point in parallelism, but there's a lot of point in repeat queues. So repeat queues are just your friend. Like, really, put repeat queue on until you're like 1800, 1900 LO. At that point, you probably have already seen enough situations where it's come up that it's not been as effective. But yeah, until then, no. Repeat queue is your friend. So much so your friend. But yeah, anyway, that is that. And I think at this point... It is... Well, I'm not sure who's next. That was a pretty decently long match. So, we are probably going to have a bit of a break, I'm guessing. So, Don won against Dime Friend, Ikens lost to Google Frog, and Ultimate Firestar lost to North Chilean G. So, round five will probably end up being, judging by the standing so far, probably... Well, Snuggle Base and Aquanim played this time around, I think. So whoever wins with Snuggle Base and Aquanim and probably Google Frog, I'm guessing. Because Google Frog at 3 1 right now. Icons at 2 2. Mark using Norphelius might. It depends. Whoever wins that might actually. Oh, yeah, whoever wins that actually will also be up there. And then Snuggle Base and Aquanim will also be 3 1. So we'll have a top four, which I will only cast the top two, I guess. I'll see. I'll judge out of that because it will be a top four. Will be fourth people at 3 1. Actually, actually, will it be? No, one of them is at 4 0. It's going to be a 4 0 and then 3 at 3 1. Honestly, I'm not sure. I got to double check. Is it top 8 or is it top 4 that go into the bracket stage? I can't remember. I want to say it's top 4, but I feel like it might have been expanded. It was top four last time. Top four, yes. Okay, so the top four are the ones going on to the bracket stage, which at this point looks like it'll probably be Snuggle Base, Aquanim, Google Frog, and the winner of Marquis Norphilius. Although, that's not set in stone. That's actually good. That can move around because those players are going to be fighting each other. The top two will probably stay. Like, Snuggle Base is pretty much a shoe in. 
Aquanim, if they win their next match, will also be a shoe, and Google Fog, if they win their next match, it'll be 4 1. But yeah, that's. There's still a fourth slot that's not taken quite yet. So we'll see how that goes. And right now, it looks like. There are a couple of matches there about halfway through. Yeah, I'm not sure that long it's going to take, but I will take a break before going on to the final round of the Swiss bracket, or Swiss segment. Swiss round. Yeah, deal with that, and then we'll move on to the bracket stage. So stay tuned for that. I'll be back with round five in a couple minutes.